Hello everyone. Welcome to this very first lecture on the structural dynamics. In today's class, I would be just giving you a brief introduction about this course and that will include the concepts that you would be learning as part of this course. Then I will give you a general idea of what is a static loading and what is a dynamic loading and what are the key differences between dynamic and static loading in terms of their effects on a structure. Then I'm, I would be discussing the problem statement that you would encounter as part of this course. Okay, so what problem to solve? And then different solution methods that we could potentially employ to solve those, that problem statement. Okay, so let us get started. In this very first lecture of structural dynamics, we are going to discuss about uh, this course. Uh, what are the different concepts that we would be going through this uh, course? What are the objective of this course? What is basically a, a, a simple difference between a dynamic system and a static system? And then I would be presenting you uh, the problem statement for this course that we would be studying. Okay, so without getting much delay, let us go through this course. Uh, if you remember from your undergraduate knowledge, you used to find out forces and deflection or different response quantities subject to a load say P0. Okay, so let us say a load P0 is being applied here on a beam of length L and the modulus uh, of lecture uh, EI. Okay, now uh, remember never at a point at any point of time you were told how the load p naught is actually being applied okay so it was just said that a static load of p naught is being applied on this beam and then you needed to find out the response quantities such as forces and deflection so my first question to you can you tell me if i have to ask you how is this load p naught is actually applied or let us say in general how a static load is applied so what i mean to say if you have to apply a static load of p naught on a structure what would be the time variation of it okay so that is my first question my second question to you is what is the deflection of this beam subject to this point load p naught okay now you know it from your undergraduate studies that if the load static load p naught is being applied you calculated the deflection at the midpoint as the maximum deflection and the value was p l p naught l cube by 48 ei now the question is would this load or would the deflection be always p naught l cube by 48 ei okay so that is my second question okay so what i am showing you here the question is how the static load p0 is applied and i am showing you four options if you had to represent the time variation of this load p for which the maximum value is p0 how would you describe this static load okay so i have shown you four options okay so you need to select one of these options if you would like you can scan this barcode and open up a form which would show you all the option and then you can select the correct answer and then it would uh, show you whether the selected answer is correct or not okay so let us discuss these four options so in the first option i have load p naught okay which is being applied like this a constant load p naught but do you think it is physically possible to apply a load like that like it suddenly goes to p naught okay we will discuss about that in the second figure 
you can see I have a maximum load of P0 and then it decreases slightly so that it goes to a value of 0 over a certain duration. In third one, I have a load P0, okay, which starts at certain time T1, it goes to P0, it is maintained over a certain duration of time, then it again goes to 0. And in the third one, I have a load which is gradually being applied so that it reaches to a maximum value of P0 after a time duration, let us say we'll call this TR or the rise time. Okay, so which one do you think can be used so to represent this uh, static load that you have studied till now? Okay, now if you think about it, the only load that could be or the load representation could be used is actually this ramp load here because if you try to apply this load or this load or this load here you would see from the principle of dynamics that you would study later they could never have an static load application through any of these representation however if you consider the fourth option here depending upon the time value of tr you might be able to apply a static load okay and we'll come to that what what do you mean by static load and dynamic load okay how do you characterize actually mathematically how do you characterize static load and dynamic load okay so this was the first thing you heard about you used to do analysis subject to certain kind of load let us say p naught is equal to 10 kilo newton or 20 kilo newton used to find out like you know the response okay but now you need to understand how the load p naught is actually applied now let us come to our second question okay so my second question is out of these four options or the four load representations that i've shown here which one would give you a deflection that is most likely to be the value p naught l cube by 48 ei okay so you have to select one of these options depending upon the plot of P versus T that is shown here that would give you a value that is closest to P naught L cube by 48 EI. Now again you can scan this barcode using your phone either through an app or through your camera okay and then you can submit the answer and see the correct answer right here. Now let us discuss each of these uh, options that are uh, that have been provided here okay. So the basic difference between these three plots A, B, C what do you find the basic difference it is basically the rise time that you see so you can see tr is an intermediate this the first option has an intermediate uh, rise time the second option is uh, is the fastest rise or i can say like you know the smallest rise time okay and third is the uh, largest rise time okay so what i mean by this is that this load is being applied fastest this slowest and this is somewhere intermediate between these two okay now i can i can simply discard this fourth option okay this because this would never produce a value of a deflection that is equal to p naught uh, uh, lq by 48ei okay so my uh, the competition is between these three options here sorry here okay so what you would see that out of these three the loading that has the largest rise time would give you a load which is closest to being a static load and we'll see why we'll see like you know mathematically we'll also prove that Okay, but physically you just need to like you know uh, imagine that if you apply a load very slowly then load is actually being applied statically and it does not produce any dynamic effect in the structure. Okay, so this one is most likely to give you the value which is P0 L cube by 48 EI. Okay, so 
now let us come to what basically defines a dynamic system okay so as we discussed dynamic system deals with the variation of a state of a system or structure with time okay of course under application of external load okay so i'll write under application of external force or load okay so again i have shown you that representation a load uh, representation that is used that can be used to represent a statically applied load of the magnitude p not okay now we saw that a parameter to determine whether a system would behave as a static system or a dynamic system under the action of external load is tr right we saw in the last slide depending upon how fast you apply or how slow you apply it might behave like a static system or dynamic system okay to demonstrate that i'll give you a simple example okay so let me show you a spring okay which has a mass m and k and another spring okay again same mass so both of these have same system properties but now i am applying a load p okay of final magnitude p not only thing in this one tr or the rise time is much much greater than tr in the second one so in this one load is being applied slowly and in this one load is being applied fast okay now can you imagine okay forget about mathematical formulation let us just talk about like you know have the feel of the system okay first develop appreciation from the real life examples then we'll get into mathematical formulation so in this case as you can see if the system are same and i applied two load of final magnitude p not however if one is applied slowly what will happen this spring won't vibrate as much as if you have a load that is being applied suddenly so in the first case load representation is something like this in the second case load representation is much more sudden okay so i can say tr plays an important role in determining whether the system would behave as a static load or a dynamic load okay now can you imagine some other parameter of the system that would determine whether the system is static or dynamic for example again consider a similar example except in this case let us say mass let me keep the mass same but i have k1 and k2 and in this case k1 is much smaller than k2 that means this is a flexible system and this is a comparatively rigid system and now i ag ap apply a load which has the same rise time so both load of final magnitude p not applied over the same duration now can you imagine if it's a flexible system then it would vibrate more and if it's a rigid system it would vibrate less of course i'm doing a relative comparison between these two so compared to this system i would see that load p which has which is a ramp load it would lead to more vibration in a flexible system compared to a rigid system okay and i would come to technicality uh, later like you know what do i mean by more vibration less vibration in terms of what response parameters but in layman terms just try to understand something like this and you can appreciate this example from a real life uh let us say a pedestrian uh, bridges that you see for example like you know the jhula bridges that you see in some villages uh, you know uh, it is also called a suspension bridge so you have something like you know uh, let us say bridge which is very flexible and supported at the end and then you have river going over like this okay you can imagine you try to walk very carefully very slowly here because if you jump it would start vibrating because this is a flexible system so the dynamic effect would be more however if you have a rigid system like a concrete slab bridge 
okay which is much more rigid than this you don't need to be that uh, uh, careful as you would uh, uh, like you know in the case of a uh, suspension bridge or like you know just a hanging bridge okay so the second parameter that determines whether the system would behave statically or dynamically is the flexibility of the system or more appropriately we would see later is the time period so it is mass and k so these two parameter and if i represent time period as this is actually what determines the second parameter okay so depending upon the values of tr and tn we can decide whether the system would behave as a static or dynamic under the action of an external load okay so this thing you need to keep in mind okay we'll come back to this later and we'll try to do mathematical the derivation of whether the system would act as a static or dynamic okay all right now let us come to classification so we saw that we have a ramp load here right okay and if we increase the value of tr to like in you know, a very large value then we can represent it as a, as a basically a static load okay now let us uh, consider loads that you have been dealing till now which were typically what dead load or live load and a typical dead load included a simple load of let us say 10 kilo newton okay and we said that is a static load now can you tell me why the dead load was considered as a static load so dead load means what uh, self weight of the structure or anything that is attached to the structure is considered as a dead load and remember that dead load is not applied suddenly to the structures if you are building a structure you would do it over a day or like you know over days over months you know so, so slowly you are going to pour concrete and build the structure okay so it is applied over day and then you also have live load live load could be like you know the habitant or like you know people that are going to occupy that building or things that could be moved okay so that would be considered as live load even that would be applied uh, slowly okay of course we are not considering live load analysis like a vehicle moving on a uh, bridge or something like that okay live load we are simply considering due to uh, weight of like you know people or like you know things that could be moved during the life of the structure okay now so those are the typical static loads that you have encountered till now okay now in terms of dynamic load we can consider earthquake load, wind load, impact load, blast load or tsunami load. And why do we consider these are dynamic load? If you consider an earthquake load, can you tell me what is the typical duration or can you think what is the typical duration of an earthquake? Maybe let us say 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, something like that. Okay. So, structure is applied a very heavy horizontal like a very large horizontal load over a very short duration so this tr is very small okay and depending upon the time period of the structure it could lead to dynamic effect okay and then i can also have wind effect and depending upon like you know at what rate the wind is uh, flowing or at what velocity the wind is flowing i can have very large dynamic effects in the structure I could have impact which is like a sudden impulsive load or I could also have blast which is also like an impulsive load and then I can also have tsunami load which is uh, like you know a sustained load over a uh, little bit larger uh, uh, duration of time than the impact and blast load. So these type of loads are characterized a dynamic load due to their duration over which they are applied to the structure okay and the typical time period of the structure okay so keep these things in mind all right now what i'm going to do i'm going to show you some videos of previous uh, loads or like you know the real life example of uh, different dynamic loads that we have mentioned in the last slide first i'm going to show you uh, basically one of the uh, few uh, images of the bhuj earthquake that happened in uh, gujarat and uh, you can see what kind of damage it resulted in so all these buildings well, most of these buildings were designed adequately like you know i can say for vertical loads you know they were designed for vertical loads but uh, i'm not sure whether they were designed uh, appropriately or adequately for horizontal load so earthquake is in horizontal load due to shaking of ground motion it leads to horizontal load on the structure 
and because of inadequate seismic design it led to uh, like a you know, lot of devastation during the earthquake and loss of uh, precious lives uh, so this is the example of what uh, a dynamic load like an earthquake can do to the structure then here is a uh, video of uh, nepal earthquake you can see uh, this is a live uh, cctv video at that time and it is showing like you know you can i'll just show you like in you know, a small clip you can always go to youtube and see like you know in detail that uh, all the clips you can see let me run this uh, video so that you can see it here so you can uh, see the uh, shaking happening and soon you will see like you know uh, the intensity increasing and lot of structures you can see that there is a structure that just fell okay and there are like you know 10 different footages at different places so let me so you can see another uh, footage is here i think uh, the structure already collapsed yeah So you can see the effect of earthquake on this residential house as well. A lot of pots falling around and uh, people coming outside. Okay, so you can go and search on YouTube, so like you know, different type of earthquake uh, loading and the failures on the structures, and you can see like you know what is the effect uh, on different structures around the world of like you know during different earthquake. Okay, now the second type of dynamic load that we discussed uh, was wind loads. What I'm going to show you, this is a suspension bridge uh, known as Tacoma Narrows Bridge. You can see that one morning uh, due to wind uh, effect, what is happening is actually what happened. A lot of wind started flowing below uh, the deck and due to pressure differential, it started creating a torsional motion of this uh, deck. Okay, and which finally led to uh, failure of the uh, suspension bridge, uh, precisely the deck of the structure. Okay, so let me just uh, play this video of course there are a lot of failure studies which would uh, more accurately describe the failure mechanism and what led to this failure you can go ahead and uh, look if you are more interested go ahead and look into those uh, studies okay so you can see uh, this uh, deck of the central span wobbling vigorously and the amplitude keeps on increasing So I'm going to fast forward this video so that I can show you the final failure video of this one. Okay. Oh, let me again go here. This is showing the front view of. Uh, actually, the funny thing happened. One of the dog was actually left uh, in the car, uh, and then uh, the owner of the dog actually went uh, uh, ahead and then actually rescued, like you know, on this wobbly. Deck. You can see that the amplitude is increasing. I'm again going to fast forward this video so that. So we also have a suspension bridge, right? We have a suspension bridge in uh, Bandra Varli ceiling. Uh, if you've not gone there, it's a great engineering structure. You can always go there just to have a look and uh, look carefully at the suspension uh, bridge that we have there. So you can see that uh, due to increased uh, basically deflection, uh, 
uh, because of the wind load it finally led to the failure of the deck span okay so uh, and now like in you know, all these type of structure need to be designed against such wind load so that even if there's a constant energy infusion due to wind uh, uh, then there should be some energy dissipation mechanism and which about which we'll learn later so that it minimizes or it actually like you know trunk or basically it keeps the amplitude within a certain limit even if there's a constant fusion of energy okay okay now let us go to the next video not yeah this is a crash test video so the third type of dynamic load that we talked about is the impact load which is a short duration pulse okay uh, so this is one of the tests that was conducted uh, now if you like you know because of the security threat many of the structure now need to be designed against aircraft impact and this was one of the experimental tests done in which uh, a concrete uh, wall uh, actually was hit with a phantom f4 aircraft and then it was seen whether the aircraft would be able to take that load or not okay so let me just uh, play this video So what do you think whether uh, this uh, aircraft whether, whether did it breach the wall or not? Well, it just so happens even the load was very high. The wall was designed in such a way that there was a lot of damage due to this impact. However, there was not a complete breach and that is what these walls actually designed for heavily reinforced concrete walls are designed for. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go to the next uh, slide. Next type of blast impact, uh, sorry, dynamic load is a blast load. Uh, what I'm showing you a building before and after bombing. This is a building uh, called Federal Building Alfred P. Mura Building in uh, Oklahoma City, and it was bombed in 1995 uh, using uh, uh, explosive kept in a van. The explosive weights were 1800 kg. What it did actually, it Due to the uh, blast, it took out the columns here, columns and beam here, and it led to so first it led to the uh, removal of columns here, and then because of the blast pressure shock wave, there was an upward pressure on these slabs which they were not designed for. Okay, so due to this, it led to the uh, progressive collapse of the building, and finally, what you see here is the building partially collapsed. So, I think a lot of fatalities happened around sort of total number goes around 160 people died in this uh, uh, building so now many of the buildings uh, are uh, whether it is there are critical like you know civil building civil building means like you know for civil purposes non-military purposes they are now being designed uh, aircraft structure uh, aircraft buildings are being designed uh, some operation control centers are being designed for uh, blast loads and also military structure, defense structure are, have always been designed for these type of uh, loads. Okay. Next is a very simple but uh, demonstrate the concept of dynamics. It's a vibration due to walking. Uh, I don't know how many of you have taken a course in, uh, sorry, uh, have you taken like, you know, as in your curriculum, you did NCC as part of your curriculum or either, I don't know whether you know about uh, uh, somebody would have told you that when you walk, on a bridge whether it is a pedestrian bridge or regular bridge you should not walk in tandem and even like you know uh, forces military or the uh, like you know these uh, uh, they are supposed to walk in a, uh, in a tandem in a periodic fashion uh, in a normal situation however they are advised against walking like that on a bridge because what happens when you walk in a tandem you create a walking load frequency we'll see how does that look like walking load okay and that leads to basically a walking load with a certain frequency if the frequency of that walking load matches with the frequency of the structure on which you are walking it leads to the failure of building okay so they are uh, asked or requested to break their steps breaking their steps means walking randomly so there are multiple frequencies with very small amplitude Okay, but not a single frequency periodic load with a large amplitude. Okay. All right. So let us go to the pretext of this course. Okay. So what you see here, what is the problem statement? Okay. For this course or what we are trying to do here. Okay. So the problem statement is 
how to build a structure that can sustain those dynamic loads that we have discussed in previous slides and mitigate their detrimental effect okay so that is a larger goal okay and what is the solution for that well the solution for that is to design structure for dynamic effects of load okay very simple right but it is not as simple as this statement make it sound okay so what is required to do that well first i am showing you a structure here this is a comp like you know i mean you can think of like you know building a structure here to obtain and design a structure first what you need to do create a numerical model of this structure okay because you cannot have a numerical model that includes each and every minute detail of any system or a structure okay so you need to create a simplified representation which might be single degree of freedom system or if you need depending upon what is your response quantity of interest you might create a multiple degree of freedom system okay what is the next step then well once you create a simplified model you need to find out what are the stiffness what are the damping properties and then from that what are the time period of the structure what is the damping is basically represented let us say representing it by viscous damping so you need to find that out okay and then you need to find out the dynamic loads that are being applied so in this case let us say i have an earthquake here okay horizontal earthquake so i will represent it through some uh, like you know uh, time history function okay and then i have a numerical model and this time history function the next step is to find out the dynamic response of this structure so response means what are the forces the base shear let us say what are the moments in the members okay what are the displacement here those are the typical response quantities once we have that i can design my individual component or overall structure to accommodate those kind of forces and deflections okay and the final step once i have that is as i said to design the structure to minimize and sustain uh, uh, those dynamic load effects okay now first three steps are analysis steps okay and the fourth step is basically a design step now the scope of this course is to study first three analysis steps so we are not going to do go ahead and go design structure but definitely we are going to study first three steps so structural through this structural dynamics course we are going to analyze system and find out the response okay there are other courses that are there and which we will see subsequently that will discuss how to design the structure once you have the effects of dynamic loads figured out clear okay so that brings us to the context okay so the context is where does this course you know whenever you start a course for the first question you should ask why i am studying this course okay what i am going to achieve through this course okay and how does it fit into a bigger picture okay so let us say if your goal is to become a structural designer or analyst or like you know computational uh, mechanist so uh, you have to first find out what is the utility of those course and how is going to be useful and how does it fit into the bigger picture now let me draw out the whole uh, curriculum and then show you like you know how does this whole thing actually builds up to work towards a greater goal to equip with you with equip you with the skills that are required to work towards designing a structure analyzing a structure okay and finding out or basically uh, building safe and economic structure okay now in your undergraduate you would have studied like a lot of subjects now let us see where do those subjects actually uh, fits into this picture okay so what are the steps required to design a structure as we discussed before well the first step you need to find out forces on the structure right and which course did you study to uh, find out forces on the structure well it was the first course was engineering mechanics right now forces might not be enough right because most of the times failure criteria are governed by the stresses not the forces okay so to get the internal stresses and strains you studied 
solid mechanics okay <clears throat> now after you uh, studied how to get the stresses and strain you also needed to find out how to get internal forces and displacements in a structure and what did you study for that basically a structure analysis course okay and finally when you were equipped with all the analysis courses okay all the analysis courses then you studied specific courses that were for the design of different type of structure so whether it was a steel design course and concrete design course okay so these were at very preliminary level very basic level now at the advanced level in the graduate curriculum let us see what are the courses and how does this course fit into the bigger picture so now what are the steps required now for advanced analysis and design okay so you did basic analysis and design in your undergraduate let us see how do we do uh, what are the steps required for advanced analysis and design so to find out the same the forces on a structure now you do advanced structural mechanics which discuss advanced methods of analysis okay and then you also now study a course which is called advanced solid mechanics to find out stresses and strains uh, in your undergraduate is you mostly focused on linear uh, stress and strains however in a graduate you might do linear and non linear both okay and then to obtain forces or stresses and strain you need some knowledge of numerical methods okay and to learn those numerical methods you take or you are going to take a course uh, which is called numerical methods okay which is part of a curriculum that we our department also has okay and then till now whether it is undergraduate curriculum or graduate curriculum these courses were focused on static again these courses are focused on static i mean you can do uh, dynamic uh, like you know advanced courses but the first course that you have which deals with the dynamic effect of loads on a structure is this course structural dynamics because most of the loads are actually not static they are dynamic even when you call a load as a static they are still a dynamic load which has a variation with respect to time but applied very slowly okay so i hope the context of this course is clear to you okay so again let me come to the problem statement so what through this course we would be doing first we need to find out what is the load that is being applied on a structure okay so first we need to determine the load history okay the second step is develop mathematical model of a structure so whether it is a building or whether it is a vehicle or whether it is any other type of uh, uh, system i first need to represent that uh, system or a structure through numerical model or a mathematical model okay once i have that with this loading history and the mathematical model of the structure i would set up what is called equation of motion so i would formulate this equation of motion and we would see how to do that for different type of system and you can extend that to a uh, you know very simplified as well as complicated uh, systems as well so i need to first set up this equation of motion and then solve this equation of motion all right okay now the sec after this once i have the equation of motion set up i would find out the response quantities okay so obtain numerical response and what are the typical response quantities i am interested is in they could be uh, this could be displacement velocity acceleration and force okay so these are the response quantities i need to find out so these are this is the basically the uh problem statement and basically through different chapters of this course we are going to addressing one or uh, multiple steps at a time okay so keep that this problem statement in mind okay when we will go through different chapters all right now let us look at how do we obtain this load history what i am going to do i am going to present in front of you typical load history that you a structure or a system might encounter in real life so the first one is a harmonic loading uh, which might be a sinusoidal or like you know cosine uh, loading this type of loading you can imagine due to uh, some machines or the vibration 
happening uh, due to machine attached to a floor or like you know other type of uh, harmonic uh, uh, so basically machines producing harmonic motions okay the second could be periodic loading now periodic loading might not be harmonic but harmonic loading is a periodic loading so just keep that distinction in mind so periodic loading is something that repeats after a period which is t not here okay so what i have shown here is basically this is like a representation of a walking load okay of course this assume a uniform walking at like you know at a fixed pace okay but this basically represents a walking load okay then there could be earthquake load which is more like a random excitation okay there could be a wind load which again could be represented by these uh, random spikes uh, which represent the pressure peaks okay uh, there could be impact load which is like a sudden spurt of a load okay for a very small duration of time and there could be a blast load which is like a sudden spike and then decreased and this duration is actually very small okay so i have shown you some of the load history that a structure might experience these are the load history and uh, typical load scenarios that would experience in while uh, obtaining a, a dynamic response of a structure okay so once you have the load history second thing we talked about is mathematical model of the structure and pardon me for the mistake here uh, so in mathematical model of the structure i can represent my structure using a single degree of freedom system and i'll i'll tell you like you know what does that mean the degree of freedom in a later slide let us say i have this pergola type of structure where uh, this is like a walkway in which a heavy slab is actually connected uh, or supported through these steel columns okay or you have a water tank in which again a heavy mass is connected through this column so this can be simplified through a single mass and then a single stiffness component represented by this column and this is called single degree of freedom system or we could encounter like in you know, a more complicated system in which i have a very complicated structure and i might decide to simplify at simple beam columns and then applied by loads here so the slab loads and everything can be applied here okay and then horizontal load might be applied here or a vertical load might be applied here it depends okay now this is this structure can be further simplified if we assume that the all mass of these floors are rigidly connected to each other and the flexibility is basically represented by these columns so i can further simplify this system through this three degree of freedom system okay now you would ask which is the appropriate representation well it depends on your problem and it depends what are you trying to achieve through that problem okay so for some system even this could be represented by a single degree of freedom system okay if let us say your goal is to find out what is the total base shear and not what is happening in the structure above okay or if your goal is to find out what are the story shears okay then you need to represent it through a shear type building or building like this okay so it depends on what are you trying to find through that uh, that uh, problem okay so coming to what are the different components of a dynamic system you have to think about what happens when a force is applied to a deformable body forget about this slide don't look at this slide right now but just think you have a deformable body and then you apply a force force that is varying with time okay so can i say if you apply a force on a deformable body then there would be an acceleration so motion or acceleration let us say motion or acceleration and if it's deformable then of course there would be deformation and can you imagine if i apply a load to a structure there would be some sort of energy dissipation so in reality every system every system every structure in reality would dissipate some amount of energy when you apply a load it might be small so in some cases it might be neglected but in for our practical purposes uh, there is always some energy dissipation okay so the third component is energy dissipation okay so considering these points in mind any structure or a dynamic system has three integral properties which are 
mass which is basically ability to resist acceleration okay then stiffness which is ability to resist deformation and then damping which is the ability to dissipate energy okay so a simplest representation of a dynamic system is a spring mass damper system okay and this is called a spring, spring mass damper representation and if this spring mass damper system is acted upon by an external force ft there would be a response which is here displacement okay so i can say the dynamic behavior of any system can be studied by modeling it as a combination of spring mass damper system okay so although i have shown you here a single uh, spring mass damper system let us say even if i have like you know interconnected body i can lump the masses okay i can lump the masses connect them with a spring and a damper like this okay connect them by spring and damper okay and each of them can be connected through each other node okay depending upon what is the connectivity okay and through this any system can be represented by like you know a spring mass damper okay so what i need you to do basically when you are doing this course try visualize visualizing every system what you see around yourself as a representation of a spring mass damper okay and of course if you can tell me that to solve this system i need to represent it with some additional properties then let me know because this i find is the most simplest representation of a dynamic system okay so what i want you to do ask yourself few questions at this point in time okay in this introduction slide how the car shock absorption works okay so you have cars or like you know any other vehicle okay and like you know our mumbai especially mumbai is famous for potholes or our indian roads are famous for potholes and all the cars or any type of vehicles are actually equipped with shock absorption so you need to imagine how would that actually work and if somebody has to design that car shock absorption how would they do it what would be the critical parameter okay then what i want you to ask yourself you guys have traveled by train and you must have seen or the metro you must have seen there are blast or crushed stones like you know uh, below the rails okay what is the function of that one why can't i just have like you know rails on the top of let us say concrete slab okay and then uh, just uh, run vehicle on the top of that so what is the utility of that okay and then uh, you might have also traveled by aeroplane have you ever noticed which wheel the aeroplane uh, any aeroplane lands on whether it, it, it is like you know front wheel or the rear wheels so just try to notice that next time and try to find out the reason why the rear wheel or why the front wheel okay and then i need you to ask yourself what will happen if a very fast moving load hits a very stiff structure okay or a very fast load hits a very flexible structure okay these two question i need to so these questions i i want you to leave i want you to leave with these questions okay keep pondering about these questions because the answers to all these questions would lie or would be answered in future chapters that we study okay so and like these questions are just example always try to imagine whenever you see the systems around you try to visualize why what is happening is happening and what is the mechanism behind that how can i explain that there are so many example of dynamics around you or the structural dynamics around you that it would become very interesting when you start looking and analyzing those systems in your mind okay so with this question i would leave you we'll come back to again these questions in subsequent chapter and we'll see i'll explain the basic concepts behind those uh, principles as well as the mathematical derivations of these uh principle or the questions on the answer to these questions okay so thank you for uh, your attention and let me just uh, leave you with these questions and uh, we'll come back to again in next chapter okay thank you